Oh, here comes a sick one. Welcome to the Hull Down, the surf show that trolls through the deep oceans of surf history looking for big hits. I'm your host, Ronnie Blakey, WSL commentator, and this is my co-host, a surf magazine journalist with 25 years in the game. He also makes up 50% of the popular podcast, Ain't That Swell, it's my big brother, Vaughn. Swelly ends. Vaughn, uh, the world of surfing. Obviously, there's those extreme talents. They compete on the championship tour. They're paid well. We see them in the magazines. But then below that, there's a list of underground core charges that do incredible things, and that's what this episode is all about celebrating. Exactly, Ron. There's an entire subculture of surfers out there who fly under the radar, and these guys are committed. If the swell's up, they're on it. If there's a far-flung reef on the other side of the world, they'll lay bricks for a year to go and surf it. And even though they may not be household names, the best surfers in the world know who these people are when they paddle out and respect their place in the lineup. That's right, Vorno. So we're going to shift the spotlight from the big names and focus on those surfers who are moving under the radar. Here's our number five. Five! Our first surfer today is a bloke from the far northwest of the Australian continent who sprung into prominence winning an air show as a 16-year-old. He wasn't even old enough to be sprayed in champagne. It's Ry Craig. very interesting case study for us, Vaughan, because there was a point in time where he was one of the biggest surf stars in the world. Huge contract dollars, getting sent away on trips to Kelly Slater. He was on fire. But for a kid growing up in WA, there's really only two things you need, and that is a good surfboard and a good fishing rod. And Ry Craig has both of those. <laughs> he sure does. And here's the crazy thing. As technology changed and media changed, Rye found a new way to get his clips out there, which was basically shoot yourself. I don't need anyone else out there. I just need a camera, a surfboard, and a giant slabby left that breaks in an inch of water and get some of the best barrel footage we've ever seen in the history of human existence. doing with the footage that he's collecting that's so impressive. He's made his own TV shows and more recently with those point of view angles he's taken us deeper inside those northwest barrels than we've ever been before. And I guarantee you I will never get that deep if I go up there myself. So Ryan, right, thanks for taking us into the pit mate number five and flying under the radar on your own terms we love it. One. Welcome back to The Hold Down. Today on the show, we're looking at surfers who are flying through life under the radar. Yes, they've got contracts. 
Yes, they occasionally pop up in the surf mags, but for us, Forno, they're not being celebrated enough. And our number four is an exceptional talent. Four! Well, if Nat's Nat and that's that, then Bryce is Bryce and eat a bowl of brown rice because this kid rips, Rob. <laughs> he does. Oh, I don't know how you, you go through life under the radar, though, when your dad has won a world title. Well, one of the most influential surfers of all time. I mean, not just a world champion, but king of the shortboard revolution, changed the way we surf, has always been a huge figurehead and a tribal elder for our sport. But you're right, we knew Bo Young was there because he'd won a couple of world titles. But where did Bryce come from? He was just sort of surfing, skating, hanging around Angowry. Next thing you know, he's turning up on all these surf trips, cleavering the daylights out of perfect waves on ASIMs, asymmetrical surfboards. I mean, where did he come from? No one knows. No one knows how, how he wasn't more recognised because mm. his talent is undeniable. You look at the way this guy surfs uh, big open faces and he would match it with the best on the championship tour. is influenced by a lot of different areas, not just within surfing, but from outside as well. He's a great skateboarder. He uh, can ride the Alaya, he can ride twins, he's a good logger, but on the shortboard, just traditional ripping, he's got it down and it's a style as unique as anything we've ever seen. He really has a different read and a different body torque on waves compared to other guys we've seen. Physically is a different specimen, isn't he, Bryce Young? He's a, a lanky guy, not doesn't have that same build as the modern day pro surfer, and as a result, He's got a really unique approach. And the company he keeps too, Ron. He hangs out with Ryan Birch a lot. They shape together a lot. They hang out with Nat a lot. There's a lot of influences there that aren't necessarily in the traditional pathway. And I think Nat would be super proud of that because you often hear him say, you know, I wish I'd said it was a lifestyle rather than a sport. He really did try and bend away from competition in his later years. And I think that Bryce's path would be stoking him out no end. Absolute shredder. Love watching him surf. Can't wait to see more vision of him. But right now, let's get stuck into number three. Three! From the smooth carving approach of Bryce Young to the full blown lofty airs of Reef Hazelwood. If you go to any junior comp in the world, Ron, you'll see thousands of kids with the talent to make it as a pro surfer. But often what happens is it's one manoeuvre, one season, one event that elevates these kids from someone who could make it to someone who is definitely going to make it. And we've seen Reef Hazelwood in the last couple of years really hit that stretch. Definitely a great competitive surfer as an amateur, moving through the ranks, getting some okay results, and then in that transition between junior surfer and qualifying series competitor, he kind of lost his way or he just disappeared off the map. But a couple of years ago on the North Shore of Oahu, he had a breakthrough performance one winter and really 
just put himself firmly back in the spotlight. And it started with a couple of big airs at Rocky Lefts. Those things broke the internet. Huge, lofty, tweaked out airs. Next thing, he's backing it up with a final appearance in the Vulcan Pipe Pro. A big season in Hawaii, as anyone will tell you, can make your name stick. Definitely, yeah. And I just think there's so many uh, young surfers doing the same thing, you know, going for the same kind of turns. And, and suddenly the best aerialists in the world were like going, who's this Reef Hazelwood kid? those big airs that winter, Reef got big opportunities when the World Tour rolled into town on the Gold Coast the following season. That's right, Ron. He turned up on the Gold Coast, got a start in the Red Bull Airborne, almost won the thing with some crazy lofty punts and then wreaked havoc in the CT with his wild card there as well. So why is he in the list? Why is he under the radar? Because at the time, he was actually unsponsored and the performance through the Hawaiian winter into that first stop on the championship tour where he took down the world title runner-up from the previous season, Julian Wilson, had Bob Hurley put the contract in front of him, signed it away, and Reef Hazelwood, even though he's on the map, not celebrated enough in our opinion, and that's why he's in the list. Sick one. Welcome back to the hole down. Today on the show, we're celebrating the uncelebrated, getting some names up in lights that deserve to be there. And with that, let's introduce our number two. two. Laura Enova. How does she make this list of surfers flying under the radar? She's one of the most popular surfers on the planet. Well, I think you can put it down to the fact, Ron, that a couple of years ago, she fell off tour. And now, when surfers fall off tour, it can be really hard to reinvent yourself and actually continue on your journey with a life dedicated to surfing. Laura found a way to do it, and this is why we're celebrating her this episode, because she has the guts and the gumption to go over the ledge. What a transformation. She packed it at Jaws in the big wave event there. She's been pulling in the barrels at Pea Pass, and now she's going after some of the heaviest slabs in Oz. That's right, mate. Slab surfing is a uniquely Australian thing, or it had been for a long time. I mean, we'd seen big, heavy, angry waves that come out of deep water, fold in half, and just explode on rocks. And this is the surf that she's chasing now. She's in the process of making a film, which is gonna come out later, but we're lucky enough to see footage of her already 
flying over the steps at Shipstern's Bluff. One of the most notoriously frightening waves on earth. This thing double sucks, ledges out. We've seen some of the heaviest big wave surfers ever eat it out there and really cop some hidings. She's not scared, she is taking it on. melting footage there can't wait to see the full film from laura enova but stick around because after the break we'll reveal who's at number one on our list of surfers flying under the radar oh here comes a sick one welcome back to the hold down ronnie with vaughn our last show for the season unfortunately but today it's been a lot of fun, Vaughan. We've been celebrating those surfers that deserve a big pat on the back. And at number one, this guy deserves all the accolades and more. Here it is. One! It's Laurie Towner, Ron. The big wave surfer from the little town of Angowrie. And we spoke earlier about how one wave, one special moment can change the course of your life. Well, it happened for Loz Towner at Off The Wall, one incredible season. A drainer that went along almost the entire length of the North Shore. And really, the hits just kept on coming after that. They did, and we've spoken about it a little bit throughout the show. Sometimes a surfer can start their career completely in the spotlight, right on the radar, bleeping, just loud and clear. But you can drop off at different stages, and Laurie certainly did that. He kind of disappeared there for a while, but one thing has never changed. He's always had a hunger for tackling huge swells. He's one of the best big wave riders in the world, and most of the best big wave surfers, the truly celebrated guys, recognise that Laurie is a rare talent. 100%. And here's the thing about Loz, mate. He loves it. He's not paddling out there going, whoa, this is a big day, I don't know if I want a piece of it. He's actually buried up to his earlobe, stroking out the back, wants the biggest set that comes through, and actually has the talent to manhandle it. Very few surfers know how to swing late under the lip and get those big boards moving in a way that puts them into positions where they're deep, where it's critical. It's not just running for the shoulder as fast as you can with Loz, mate. He wants to sit on the tail and watch the view as it all goes on around him. This story is amazing too, because Laurie Towner was influenced by one of the great surfers who lived his whole life under the radar, the late, great Batty Trelaw. That's right. Batty really was one of the original free surfers, one of the original guys who did it for nothing but the love. He moved up to Angari, he shaped his own boards, he was part of the Morning the Earth generation. He loved big waves, but more than that, he was an ocean man. He loved knowing where the set was going to break, where to be sitting, how to get the deepest. 
everything was about positioning, everything was about the ocean, and that's what Batty instilled in Loza, mate. A love of the ocean. Whether you're fishing in it, whether you're surfing in it, whether you're just sitting on land and staring out over it, it's something that is right in the heart of those guys and sums up the spirit of the men. It sure does. Laurie Towner, though, amazing performances at different locations all over the world. Yeah, it seemed like even in his early days, all his peers wanted to punish him because he was sent out over the ledge at Shipsterns. He ended up becoming one of the very best out there. Anytime there was a purple blob coming around that southern ocean, he was heading down south, mate. And how many big crystal blue caves has he threaded down there, hopping off the ledge? Wild performances. Unbelievable stuff. I love his Fiji efforts in a crowd of just very renowned big wave surfers. They're basically talking about Laurie. Oh. They're looking up to Laurie. It's in another realm what he was able to achieve in Fiji. And if you hear the banter amongst anyone from that swell, they're all saying he was the guy to watch. He had it on a stick. He was the natural. Yes, Vaughn R. Laurie, very worthy of sitting in the number one position on our list of surfers flying under the radar. Keep it up, Loz. Unfortunately, Warner, that's all we've got time for this season, mate. It's been fun, Ron. It's Love all the coming. Froth. It's all coming to an end. It's been great celebrating the big moments in surfing, talking about the wildest characters. We've got a big thank you we've got to throw out to Dave and Andy at Surf World on the Gold Coast. Make sure you check out their space. Incredible surfing memorabilia. But until next year, enjoy your surfing. Keep having fun. I wish you